Mr. Ramesh uh, is the inventor, scientist behind this uh, revolutionary product, uh, which is making waves called uh, Nano Urea. After my master, after my PhD at Indian Council of Agriculture Research Institute, uh, I went to Washington University in St. Louis. Uh, and at Washington University in St. Louis, I used different methods to manufacture nanomaterials. And the aim was to develop the material with high quality and precision with reduced cost. I come from a farm family of India and I would like to help uh, millions of farmers like my parents. Uh, an Indian person, we believe in like uh, Vasudev Kutumkam that uh, how our knowledge and skill can help. And uh, I always learn from my parents and teachers that the knowledge and skill, as much as you share, you will gain more. And when I work in the laboratory, let's say like when I mix some chemicals in my test tubes, I have few things in my mind that how it is going to help uh, my parents. And not only my mother and father, but millions of parents like farmers like my parents. At Washington University, we developed some robust method to manufacture nanomaterial at the low cost and increase the, which can increase the crop productivity. Born and brought up uh, in a farmer family uh, and I studied throughout in the government uh, schools. I have seen my parents that every year they are buying more fertilizer than their previous years. And uh, their income is either like nearly stagnant the same as the previous year. So after my master's, I joined Indian Council of Agriculture Research, ICR, uh, which basically further uh, deepened my interest to develop novel fertilizers. And that's how I started working on nanomaterials. So during my school days also, because parents were doing farming, so after coming back from the school, we used to work with the parents uh, in the farm field and also like my other elder brother, his duty was to uh, take care of the cattle and I was more interested. So I was working with them in the farms. The inspiration I received from my farm field where parents were working uh, to improve the agriculture. And then I was thinking that all the farmers of the country are like my parents and all the farmers are same and they are having similar kind of challenges. Individual grow only one family grow, but if we share our knowledge and skill uh, and then the entire society grow. Responsibility of the people like uh, uh, us who received the education from the efforts of all the peoples in the society. Because for example, I received the education in a government school. Government school is run by the public money and the public money comes from each and every individual of the country. So that's why like if I gain any knowledge, I have the responsibility to give a back to the entire society, entire country. And that was the reason behind that whatever we gain, we should share this with the entire country or entire world. I would like to uh, really sincerely thank uh, the IFO entire management. A special thanks to our managing director, Dr. U.S. Avasti, who basically like invested a lot in the uh, new and innovative ideas. Uh, which can bring uh, sustainability and precision in agriculture. Good morning, uh, Mr. Ramesh. Uh, is the inventor, scientist behind this uh, revolutionary product, uh, which is making waves called uh, Nano Urea. So, welcome, uh, Mr. Ramesh. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for having me here. So, the, the product has made uh, such a huge impact in short time because uh, the, the dynamics are such, uh, the stakes are such. So it's a, in fact, it's a revolutionary product. So can you tell us uh, how it all started? Of course, uh, we'll also talk about your uh, education background. What led to all this? Uh, kindly tell us. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, sir, this nano urea uh, product is a nitrogenous fertilizer and uh, this product we developed with an aim that how we can increase the huge efficiency of nitrogenous fertilizer. But because currently used, uh, the most nitrogenous fertilizer, if we screen out, uh, urea is the most used nitrogenous fertilizer across the world. And India is the one of the major global consumer for the urea. 
nano urea product we developed uh, to tackle the challenges uh, being uh, faced by the country related to urea fertilizer as we know that nano urea is a nitrogenous fertilizer providing nitrogen nutrient to the crop and we developed this product to address the challenges of currently used granular urea urea is one of the most consumed fertilizer across the world including india and india is the most consumed uh, urea fertilizer country because when farmers use the urea only 30% is being used by the crop on an average and the rest of them is going to the environment whether in form of nitrous oxide as a greenhouse gas or in form of nitrate leaching or it volatilizes and uh, reach to or ultimately also reach to the water as eutrophication so to address these environmental challenges and the part of that which is affecting the soil health we developed this novel product based on nanotechnology in which we control the particle size to nanometer scale and 1 nanometer is 1 billion billionth of a meter 10 to the power minus 9 meter so when we control the material at so small scale this material brings the unique uh, properties which basically not only provides nutritional role but also provides stimulatory role to the plants and increase the huge efficiency so that uh, environmental release is less and then more impact on the plants so that even in a small quantity it can fulfill the plants nitrogenous requirement and increase the crop productivity one bag of urea is equal to one bottle of uh, nano urea now the product which you have developed isn't it so it has significant uh, uh, impact for the logistics warehousing storage transport the entire fertilizer industry is organized isn't it uh, yes sir so there are multi dimensional benefit of this product as you rightly mentioned that when we transport a bag of urea like about 45 kg even at a farmers level if we talk farmers has to carry some sort of vehicle whether it is a start with a bicycle to the motorcycle to tractor or truck uh, to carry the bags whereas bottle can be easily the person can put into his or her pocket and they can carry but if we talk about district level state level or country level it is a huge benefit in terms of reduction in the logistic cost and more than the logistic cost these days uh, we can talk about environmental emission because this much of material has to be carried by the train or carried by the trucks or by the other transport means and they also consume the fuels and generate the emissions so if a bag equivalent to a, 40, uh, a 500 ml bottle which also reduce very significant amount of environmental pollution coming out from the emissions during the logistic other benefits like storage and trust storage with benefit perspective that typically this urea is very uh, uh, hygroscopic in nature so if farmers keep this urea bag outside the environment or if the warehouse condition is not good they basically make the take uh, uh, like uh, high because of hygroscopic in nature and farmers cannot use for the next season or their efficiency like ammonia released and something like that but in this case farmers can store this bottle up to 12 months or up to the life cycle and they can use and this is not affected by the rain or humidity or something like that and also the storage cost is less because uh, in case of bag we need like bigger uh, warehouses to store the bags uh, whereas in case of bottle you really compared to that you really require very small size warehouse to store equivalent amount of urea so it has benefits environmental benefits as we said earlier but also the logistic and uh, other cost and if we talk about another economical benefit perspective uh, uh, sir india is uh, india is the country which having like least commercial price like uh, least commercial price of urea because of the higher subsidy given by the government of india on this particular uh, for nutrient and because of that uh, uh, because currently the gases prices which basically require to manufacture the urea granule are consistently getting higher and higher over the period of time and that's why the subsidy amount is also going up and up so this nano urea the manufacturing cost is also less 
So that is why it doesn't require actually the subsidy because the price of manufacturing or even the retail price of nano urea is even 10% lesser than the conventional urea being sold to the farmers after the huge subsidy. So that is why it is also going to save the huge economy of the country which is currently being spent on uh, either the import of the urea fertilizer or the in form of the subsidy. And other thing I would like to share with you from the farmer's perspective that there are millions of farmers like my father out in the farmer's field uh, today and they measure their economy in terms of increasing the crop yield. And we have found that when nano urea being applied on the crops, it increased the crop productivity by 8%. So if the crop productivity increases and the consumption of conventional urea reduces, then it helps the soil health uh, and increase the income of the farmer's field with lesser agri input. Farmers, that is uh, fantastic because the cost of cultivation for the farmer will come down and also the production also is increasing. That is, there are benefits on both sides. So the, the present attention of increasing farmer's income definitely will be achieved by this product. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you for this uh, comment, sir. We have seen in our research trial also the similar results. Uh, we have done trials with more than uh, 43 research institutes of Indian Council of Agriculture Research and State Agricultural Universities, as well as more than 11,000 farmers field in the coordination of Parsi Vigyan Kendras. And we have found that there is a, that is called BC ratio, benefit to cost ratio, and that was increased significantly by application of nano -Yuri. More than that, we, have, we are also analyzing the soil health of farmers field where uh, nano urea is being applied. And we have found that there is a significant increase in microbial population, uh, soil organic carbon. These are the features which basically tells that the soil health is improving. One point uh, you briefly touched already, uh, the, the raw materials required for making urea, mostly uh, the country is not uh, having those resources. We import oil, we import all the raw materials also. So this is like, this is a boon for Indian economy, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir, because currently uh, about more than half of the country's requirement of fertilizer is being imported from other countries. And because of the global circumstances, the prices of the raw materials are going up. And that clearly reflects in the subsidy being given by the government or the money being spent by the government on the import of fertilizer. So this nano urea will significantly save the money. As per the Economic Times, one of the editorial, it will save on an average uh, 22,000 crore to 40,000 crores a year uh, for the government of India uh, in terms of subsidy and uh, in terms of what the money is spent on import. That is uh, very significant, in fact, a huge amount. Uh, you also mentioned about uh, the ecological impact or rather the positive impact of uh, using less fertilizer. So that is because very indiscriminate because urea is being uh, available at uh, say very affordable rate because of the subsidy. Uh, the, uh, the tendency is to use to more, uh, more than the required. So thereby we are only wasting our land, water, entire ecology, and the environment is getting adversely affected. You mentioned it, isn't it? Yes, sir. In fact, sir, we recently published an article in a Nature Scientific Report. I will show the audience here. Uh, in this article, we basically mentioned that how this use of nano uh, urea along with organic farming practice where farmers do not use any kind of other chemical fertilizers. They just used com uh, city compost as well as some uh, biostimulants and biofertilizers along with nano fertilizers. And last two years, this trial has been completed in this paper recently published uh, just last month in Nature Scientific Report. And uh, it has been recorded that the crop yield increased by 8 to 11 percent and fertilizer consumption, they, don't, they did not use any kind of chemical fertilizer. So, so when the fertilizer uses, uh, the conventional chemical fertilizer uses on the farm field reduces and crop productivity increases. So when we maintain the natural cycle of this closed system of the ecosystem, it basically helps in reducing uh, the environmental degradation or soil degradation. In fact, the complete ecological cycle, whether because 
farm is not only associated with the crop but it is also associated with very small organisms whether it is fungus or bacteria or earthworm or several other microposes so this basically help the entire ecosystem uh, to improve their uh, health status okay uh, mr ramesh uh, coming back to your uh, background education i read that you come from a uh, very humble farmers uh, background which we are we are, we are all proud of it uh in rajasthan jodhpur uh, and then the way you have risen uh, to this level so the country is proud of such scientists like you so who have made it possible can you tell us how about your uh, childhood education and how you have progressed from being a uh, boy born in a rural setting in jodhpur to this level uh, so thank you for the question and also the praise I really appreciate it, uh, sir. I born and brought up uh, in a farmer family, uh, and I studied throughout in the government uh, schools. So during my school days, also because parents were doing farming, so after coming back from the school, we used to work with the parents uh, in the farm field, and also like my other elder brother, his duty was to uh, take care of the cattle, and I was more interested, so I was working with them in the farms. so over the period of time like uh, since the understanding developed the, like about how the plant grows what the plant required to grow i have seen my parents that every year they are buying more fertilizer than their previous years and uh, their income is either like nearly stagnant the same as the previous year and their spending is going up and up uh and then uh, every year they are also putting like lot of other efforts they require like more water and then then ground water is depleting then i was thinking that how to grow these crops with less uh, fertilizers uh, so in school case of like 11th and 12th uh, i started reading in botany that how these essential nutrients for the plants are working and like that and then i did uh, bsc in uh, botany chemistry and geology to understand more that how this ecology it surrounds the farm field works and that basically led me uh, interest and move towards the masters in biotechnology where i thought that whether the gene editing or genetic engineering can help plant to grow without fertilizer or less amount of fertilizers so after my masters i joined indian council of agriculture research icr uh, which basically further uh, deepen my interest to develop novel fertilizers and that's how i started working on nano materials so we used the soil based microorganisms fungus and bacteria to synthesize novel nano materials during my phd and when we gave those nano materials to the plants we have seen some miracle results like increasing the nodule formation in the roots uh, increasing the leaf uh, chlorophyll content increasing biomass and like that and that's how this interest further developed uh, to the scaling up so after my master after my phd at indian council of agriculture research institute uh, i went to washington university in st louis uh, and at washington university in st louis i used different methods to manufacture nano materials and the aim was to develop the material with high quality and precision with reduced cost and we used different type of methods like biological methods physical methods chemical and aerosol methods and uh, at washington university we developed some robust method to manufacture nano material at the low cost and increase the which can increase the crop productivity we tested those crops back there in in united states and during that time i wrote a letter uh, to government of india uh, to prime minister uh, office and uh, express my interest that i come from a farm family of india and i would like to help uh, millions of farmers like my parents uh, and this is my uh, detail of research and then they invited me to ministry of chemical and fertilizers and where they uh, where this is how i like i connected back with ifco and then ifco's uh, management people uh, visited my laboratory back in san louis uh, and they visited my farm fields and uh, then this is how i come back here in india and started working uh, to manufacture the products in india so Uh, this is how in like a short summary we developed this product so of course uh, inspiration i received from my farm field where 
parents were working uh, to improve the agriculture and then i was thinking that all the farmers of the country are like my parents and uh, each of them are suffering whether you go to the farmers of rajasthan or west bengal or uh, odisha or punjab or gujarat like all the farmers are same and they are having similar kind of challenges with whether they are having fertilizer availability issue or fertilizer accessibility fertilizer prices or the environmental climate change impact issues like whether it is due to temperature floods uh, or biotic abiotic stress so that's how my laboratory and team is working to tackle these challenges using nanotechnology if you allow me mr ramesh uh, say you you are such a great motivation for youth you started from a farmer's family with idealism then again you progressed uh, through your education Uh, you had your that uh, one burning desire to do something at the same time you also had in your back of your mind the welfare of farmers whom you have seen closely <clears throat> coming from your farmer's family see th- this idealism is actually is uh, not that easy to find in today's world and i also read about uh, <clears throat> your selfless attitude just to uh, help it uh, the product to be universally used so you didn't go for any commercialization of the product also so that is fantastic can you tell us about that uh, that, that part also yes yeah, uh, sir thank you so much uh, uh, actually like uh, sir being uh, an indian person we believe in like uh, vasudev kutumkam that uh, how our knowledge and skill can help and uh, i always learn from my parents and teachers that the knowledge and skill as much as you share you will gain more and that was like one of the principle behind when i wrote to the government of india that if government can provide this at the affordable cost to the farmers i will give away this technology at free of cost to the farmers and that was the main motivation because uh, when we study we can access today like not many things but there are millions of farmers out there they are not able to access similarly uh, uh like farmers kids these days they are migrating towards like industry jobs or other jobs they are not advancing the agriculture so that was for that reason i also started uh, some scholarship in my uh, university on the name of my parents uh, those who read in the nanotechnology area i also provide some basic amenities in my schools like for example computers or other furnitures like those things uh, for the accessibility point of view and the main reason behind that sir because when individual grow only one family grow but if we share our knowledge and skill uh, and then the entire society grow so when the entire society grow there is not disparity and then i feel that like there is an that's what the responsibility of the people like uh, uh, us who received the education from the efforts of all the people in the society because for example i received the education in a government school government school is run by the public money and the public money comes from each and every individual of the country so that's why like if i gain any knowledge i have the responsibility to give back to the entire society entire country and that was the reason behind that whatever we gain we should share this with the entire country or entire world hey, mr ramesh this is like music Uh, whether it is such a fantastic uh, account uh, how many of us uh, youth uh, think like this so you are a role model as you spoke about your commitment your, your family your you said about the world as a family also the ever kutumbam the world itself is a big family uh, see i think uh, all of our youth should look to you such as a role model because selflessly you are doing your service still you are continuing with it so it's i have no words this is a fantastic uh, journey uh, and we wish you a long way ahead uh, at the same time i would like to ask uh, along with the nano urea any thoughts for developing uh, other fertilizers in nano form using nano technology uh, thank you so much sir for your kind words and uh... also giving this opportunity to interact with you uh, we are working on other important uh, nutrients as well because urea is just one uh, nitrogenous fertilizer but plants require about 17 different kind of elements so we are working on uh, those as well we have recently submitted our application to the government of india related to nano zinc nano copper 
and then nano DAP, diammonium phosphate, which is like an another very important fertilizer, and India largely import out of that. And we are working on other nutrients like sulfur, boron, potassium, uh, manganese, magnesium, like that. Uh, so we are working on multiple different type of nutrients and also various other biostimulants that how we can provide a complete solution to the farmers. In addition to that, we are also working on some sensors and other uh, sensor-based technology which can detect the plant pathogenic attacks in an advance. Let's say like a plant is susceptible to certain disease uh, or certain pathogenic attack in response to changing uh, weather pattern or changing climatic patterns over the period of time. So we are developing those sensors which we can implant in the, in the farm and based on the climatic sense or environmental uh, released signals, they can receive bio signals from those pathogenic uh, attackers organisms and uh, they can give the information to the farmers in advance that such kind of attacks may happen to the crops so that farmers can take precautionary measures in a, in like instead of taking the measures after attack of the pests so we are working on several measures related to seed treatments related to crop uh, health management related to crop nutrition in addition to sir i would like to share some other things which uh, of my interest here that uh, we are working on a uh, vertical farming system because uh, these days you can see that uh, most of the arable land in all the countries is converting into big township, big roads because of the global population increase and also the water availability is less. So we are working on hydroponic system, aeroponic system that how we can make energy efficient vertical farming system that reducing uh, the amount of energy requirement in terms of uh, light or uh, energy and then the amount of water requirement to increase the crop productivity. Uh, because our lab has strength to manufacture different kind of nanomaterials of different shape, size and nanomaterial is an interdisciplinary in nature and it, it also has application in different sectors in pharmaceutical sectors in civil and engineering in uh, other medicine sectors so we are also uh, developing some nanomaterials like one of the patent uh, i received last year related to calcium carbonate nanoparticles for controlling tumor gr growth and similarly we developed some gold nanoparticles which can be used for drug delivery to the brains so these are the few things that we are working on that and also my dream is that because currently NASA uh, and ISRO and these kind of space agencies are trying to grow the plants in the space. So currently they need to do some seed treatment or carry a lot of fertilizers to the space and because of payload capacity, uh, this nanotechnology can help in reducing the payload capacity, payload requirement of the fertilizers and grow the plant faster in the space. So if the opportunity arises, I hope one day we can also help uh, ISRO to grow the plants in this space. That is great. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, the entire scientific community and the young scientists of India so will look forward to you uh, because of the, 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 the kind of vision you have. The entire Indian uh, uh, agriculture will transform. The, the kind of products uh, uh, you are thinking, uh, rather the organization together you are thinking. Uh, at this moment, we will also, I think, uh, acknowledge the role of IFCO uh, because uh, the way IFCO has come forward together as partnership, using your uh, knowledge, your commitment, your brain, so the products have come up, isn't it? Yes, sir. I would like to uh, really sincerely thank uh, the IFO entire management and uh, specifically I would like to thank because you are also part of the board in the IFO board. So I would like to thank you as well. And a special thanks to our managing director, Dr. Yves Avasti, who basically like invested a lot in the new and innovative ideas uh, which can bring uh, sustainability and precision in agriculture. Uh, and when I met him first time, uh, he was quite inspiring and he told me that like if you can really want to work for Indian farmers and we are here to support you and I would like to thank entire IFO family and uh, specifically to Dr. Avasti who invested in the idea and today this uh, is helping to millions of farmers in India in addition to economical benefit it is going to help in big way to the environment and which will which will be like uh, helpful for generations. Mr. Ramesh, uh, what is your uh, uh, 
advice or uh, message to young scientists of India. We, we have a lot of scientists who have done PhD. Like, like, so what separates them from uh, scientists like you? You have that uh, passion, desire, and also you have made uh, use of the available resources. Resources are same for all young scientists, but you have risen above all this. How it was possible and uh, what is your message to young scientists? Uh, sir, I, I think like everyone is uh, playing their bits and parts with their hard work and dedication. Uh, but I can share a few ideas like for example, uh, when I was, I'm, when I work in the laboratory, let's say like when I mix some chemicals in my test tubes, I have few things in my mind that how it is going to help uh, my parents and not only my mother and father but millions of parents like farmers like my parents my, my mother and father so how it is going to help so we have to when we work in the lab we think about the customer problem uh, we think about our farmers problem that what problems we are going to solve and being a uh, being a member of farmer family i know that what kind of problems they are facing uh, in terms of like fertilizer availability fertilizer quality and fertilizer use efficacy and then as a scientist, I try to bring uh, solutions from the scientific principles, scientific concepts uh, that how this product can be fine-tuned as per the requirement of the plants, as per the requirement of our, our farmers. And then as an entrepreneur, I also think that how it can be made affordable because if we develop any technology which is really, really good, but if farmers cannot access it, if it is like, let's say, $1,000, 500 ml bottle, then farmers won't get it. So how we can make this as an affordable cost. Uh, so these things we keep in mind. And also, I also think that uh, research is not just about publishing a paper. Research is not about writing a PhD thesis or writing a master's thesis. But it is much more than that. That the, the work we do each day, can we translate this to real world application or can we add some fundamental knowledge to the knowledge that we already know or available in the literature. And that's why that is the like, I believe, like key for making an innovation and invention because just repeating someone's work isn't just a reproducibility. But if you think about think beyond the publication, beyond a, uh, a thesis, then we can really go for translational research. And uh, India is a huge resource. There is no limit of money. There are like a lot of resources available. The only thing is that we have to identify the problem and find the solution to take to the next level. And I also request my fellow scientists that try to develop a prototypes. When you identify some discovery, develop the prototype, then collaborate with an industry which can really reduce the cost of bring new innovation and ideas that how to scale these products up and take to the application stage. So the collaboration is must developing prototypes and keeping the things that how what the work I'm doing in the laboratory today, how it is going to help the, the my customers, whether it is farmers or industry or any other uh, uh, target uh, customer of that research. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ramesh. That is the message actually. Uh, you said it. Uh, the task before young scientists is very clear. I think the guidance you have provided is very important that to go much beyond uh, publishing a paper or repeating the earlier research or works. So that something breakthrough or new thinking has to happen. You mentioned it. That's fantastic. I think this is the message I think young scientists will uh, take it also. Uh, what What is ahead for uh, Mr. Ramesh? Uh, uh, ahead in next few years. Now, how do you, you 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 look like a philosopher already? Very young at a young, very young age. The kind of Indian ideals you have imbibed. Uh, we are all proud of you. So we wish you also a great journey ahead, so that you will be contributing along with your team. Uh, so many products which will be of uh, value to millions of farmers. As you said, we are touched. The word you said that your parents, all farmers are like your parents. What a statement! Only you can make this. So thanks a lot. Uh, uh, wonderful to interact with you. Uh, any thoughts you would like to share? Uh, you will be in India or uh, since the world is the stage, you will be also moving crisscross. Sir, uh, I would like to serve the entire world, but because India, I believe that India is an epicenter to serve the entire globe and uh, give like a lot of opportunity to the entire world to learn and to serve the world. Uh, so that's there. Uh, but I also would like to share like a couple of thoughts that 
today we are facing climate change kind of situation uh, but in the future the countries will not only will be suffered economically but there are few other challenges are coming related to energy and nutritional security that we are having the enough food but the food doesn't have the adequate nutrition in it so there is a world for like hidden hunger that we are eating biomass but without the nutrition so in future we would like to work on uh, like how we can make a country with energy secure and then uh, nutritionally secure which can once the food is nutritionally adequate then it can also help addressing other challenges related to health and also and then nanotechnology is interdisciplinary in nature it works in across the different type of subjects Uh, so certainly would like to work on uh, explore and partnership or make collaboration with other industries related to like semiconductor or sensor or or advanced technology based products whether it is graphene or quantum dots or like that thank you so much for giving me the opportunity sir thank you mr ramesh it's fantastic i think uh, i am inspired and many will be inspired after uh, seeing this episode uh, and personally i would like to come and meet you in your own uh, uh, laboratory uh, to get more inspired the research and development you are doing and the entire team under your guidance is doing fantastic thank you very much Sorry. thank you sir you are so kind to me and uh, i am uh, looking forward to meeting you in person thank, thank you, you very much.